dollars literally went into this production tonight. We would like to ask for your complete silence throughout the evening and throughout the play. You don't have a flashlight, bring it up here, please. Yeah. For the opening of the 1991 Tuff Shin Nun Aleph production season, Show and the Witch! Tell me who 
God has placed them here. They're all over. They're, not, they're massing great armies. They're in the mountains of Sunan. They're swarming. With saviors, weapons. Very right now. Lord, we managed to get rid of them last time. Where are they? Oh, they're in Sunan. They're on the way to the Boa. They're going to destroy us. We have to do something. That's the report you give me? You tell me it's peace and quiet? And a few moments later, I get a report from a messenger in Amasso. Where are they exactly? They're right now in Shunin. They're approaching the mountains of Galvo. Quickly. How many? There are lots. There are lots of them. Come on, hundreds? No, your majesty, you don't understand. Much thousands, much of thousands, upon thousands. Ten thousand? More, you know. Thousands of soldiers. We have a problem with that? It shouldn't be any problem, Your Majesty. Are we really back in position this time? With tens of thousands of soldiers amassed at arms of war? Should be no problem, Your Majesty. Well, then out there. Yes, Your Majesty. Why don't you call the armies together? I must say you get your groups of armies together, and let's begin planning for the battle. They close by, so we can certainly defeat them. It's just one problem. Before we go to battle, of course, we have to have the group of our British world. We have to ask our British Oracle if we will succeed, as we have done in all previous battles that we've gone to. We must ask of Hashem first. Amasa. Yes, sir. Go to have Yosef and Kayin Godel. Have them ask the Ur and the what we always done. And find out what Hashem has in mind. Find out if Hashem approves this battle or not. I'm also hastily. Your Majesty, there's one problem. The kind Godel is not in our camp. It's in the camp of David. Oh, yes. It's there. That is the problem. Uh, it nearly passed my mind. David and I have been at odds. And if Yosef the kind Godel joins David's camp, and you think I must know that the Queen of will not ask the Urim Batumim for me because he's the dumbest? I doubt that highly. I think our victory has to come to a stop at this moment. Call your soul is in danger. No. I'm sure I'm yes, sir. The dumbest, certainly, will allow you to speak to the Urim Batumim and find out from the Urim Batumim what we shall do. I must know. Hurry up. Yes. 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 What do you think out uh, there? How do you think we... What do you think we do? You think... Your returning will let us know? You think... That your returning... Tell us yes. Well, I certainly hope so, Your Majesty. And yes, sir. I'm afraid I have bad news in that. Bad news? The kind God will ask for a woman, and, and there was no reply. <laughs> no reply? No, Your Majesty. Sorry. This has never happened before. Are you sure he asked in the proper way? Just like you asked him, Anthony. Whether we should go to battle against the Zishim tomorrow? Are you sure it was asked in that proper manner? Yes. And the Kayan Godel did whatever he was supposed to. And yet, there was no answer. Oh, I know why. Ahmed? Yes, Mr. You think of the 
reason why the only Matumi wouldn't answer? You're afraid to say. Perhaps it's my affairs. Perhaps it's what I've done. Perhaps Hashem doesn't want to talk to me anymore. He took away the kingdom from me. These robes don't mean anything. This crown is hardly on my head any longer. It will be removed. And that's why I know that Tumi refuses to speak with me. I have to find out what to do. Kali Sol is in danger. Out there, what do we do? <coughs> Anafi. Let's ask Anafi. Anafi has a way to communicate with Hashem. Hamasa. Quickly, go to the Nabiyan. Ask them. Perhaps they will tell us. Quickly, on your way. being sent to you by Shalom Amel. I would like to know if you have an answer regarding the question if Paul Israel should go to war with the Flesher. Unfortunately, there has been no response. I've been misfouled over the situation. I was misfouled to Kodesh Baruch Hu. But unfortunately, I have bad tidings for, Sh for Shol Amel. Unfortunately, there is no response. No answer. No answer. Thank you. Can't bring 
wishes? The tyrant says it's not true. You're not allowed to. Speak to a witch. Your Majesty, it's a matter of blood and epic. Yes, thousands of lives are, are dependent upon this decision. Saving Jewish lives. For that, we would be allowed to speak to a witch. We would be allowed to use the Koya of Tumor. Now, I can't. I can't see myself going to a witch's house, to the very people that I destroyed, to the very people that I killed. To the very people that I want to do uproot, because they are the cause of gloom and cloud this world. Then I go to now go. And what will she do to me, this witch? What will she do? This witch will be able to bring back to life your Rebbe Shmuel Hanavi. Come on, bring back to life Shmuel Hanavi. What have I out of my mind? I believe that. You believe that? You yes, believe a witch can bring someone back to life? I have to know for a fact that yes, she has within her powers to be able to do such a thing. Unbelievable. Kayak, the power of Tumma to do anything. Power of Tumma. Well, you know, the magicians in the trial, they did things with the power of Tumma as well. They changed water to blood. They made frogs appear. I must be the same Kaya Katuma. Yet the Tyrasters. Of course, the Tyrasters, if the Tyra says, the Oyu Benjidoyi practice has to be abolished and destroyed. Kuach Nefesh. Kuach Nefesh. I have no alternative. Yoram Bitumin said no. The Nabibs don't answer. And left with but one alternative. Go to a witch. To go to a woman who will be able to bring up a dead person. And I will speak to Shmuel, my Rebbe. I will speak to him. And Shmuel will let me know. I'm there. Yes, Your Majesty. Very good idea. Let's go. But there's one thing I may request of the king, please. What is it? Since this lady in the forest knows the, about the decree that you have decreed many years ago about all the Oyev and the Yudani being killed out, may I may ask of you that we take off our clothes, our princely robes, and my armor in order to be able not to scare off this lady so that she will not run away and do the thing that we uh, ask. Why, of course, I did. You're right. If I would show up in my kingly clothes, huh, she would immediately think I'm here to kill her. Of course. Very brilliant. Very good out there. We will change to peasant's clothes. I must have some clothing somewhere. Change to those clothes. Will appear at her home at the end. Where's my servant?
hopefully we will get to our destination. You sure you know where this lady lives? You sure you know where this witch resides? Yes, Your Majesty. I am positive. Walking and walking and walking. You know, Abner, I was thinking all along the way. I keep thinking to myself, are we doing the right thing? Is this the right thing to do? Consult by a witch? You sure this is the right thing? Well, Your Majesty, what else is there for you to do? Well, you know, we could go to battle without asking Hashem. We thought, we know how to win battles. You're my general. I'm a son. Very good general. We could do it. Who says that we should be going to a witch? Well, no. Yeah. I know. I know the only way. Yes, we asked the Urim to him, and we asked the Nabiyim. Now the only thing left is a witch. Let's get there. Where are we? We've been walking through this forest now for three, four hours. Where is this place? Just a little longer, Your Majesty. I don't see anything. All I see is pitch black. What's up there? See something in the distance? Could we be close to it? You should know where it is. I'm not telling me. Yes, straight ahead. Straight ahead, Your Majesty. This is where it is? Yes, Your Majesty. I don't see nothing. Dark. Are you sure? I am positive, Your Majesty. Nothing here.
you please let us in? Your Lord says it's none of my business. You decide to drive me home. Now go away, please, from here. But please, you can't send us off now. We're in the middle of the forest. We've been gone a number of days from our home. We haven't eaten. We haven't slept. We finally found your home. Please let us in. I feel please. Like please. You're all right, come in, come in. You want to go to sleep? Sleep on the floor. I have a lovely woman. I have no bed for you. We don't want to sleep. We just want to talk to you for a minute. You have no business. Let me stay long. I will keep quiet. You stay away from me. Thank you, thank you for letting us in. But can we talk to you? We have something very special to speak with you of. All right, fine. I'll be down in one second. I have an old lady who takes his time to get down. Oh, 
told me she is a witch. I thought you told me she can help. Your Majesty, please, let me try to speak with her alone. Please do so, I have. Time is of the essence. Look in my face. Look in my face. Do you recognize me? Father? My son? Yes, mother. Why do you bring this man into my house? You came, you said to me when Shaw was killing the witches, that if I hid in the forest, and if I did not talk with witchcraft, I would be safe. But now you bring this man into my home. Are you trying to kill your own mother? No, mother. Absolutely not. But please, this is a friend of mine who needs a favor. Please trust me, brother. Trust me. I would not do anything to harm you. Trust me. Only for you, my son. Thank you. I will do it. Thank you. Well, what does she say out there? I'm talking to your friend. I shall help you. Oh, thank you, madame. Madame. This is what I need of you. With your powers, I need you to bring up someone from the dead so I may speak with him just for a brief little time. From the dead! From the dead! That's interesting. And who is this man that you would like to bring up from the dead? I have to have Shmuel. Oh, 
be fat. No food. Please take something to eat. Please. I haven't eaten all day, and I will not eat now. Your Majesty, you need your strength for tomorrow's battle. Please, I beg of you, please take something to eat before we go to battle tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll take something. A bit of water, something to drink.
Now I'm able to take this plank and I'm also this plank. This should be no problem whatsoever. But you know, I should tell you though, that in every battle, there's always a possibility of someone getting killed. Someone died. You know that? Yes. That's every battle. But we always go out victorious with Hashem, Hashem's help. You always come out victorious. But sometimes, soldiers die. And some soldiers don't come back. Some soldiers don't survive. And some soldiers get arrows pierced through their hearts and spears through their bodies. Yes. You know, if tomorrow we go to battle, something like that could perhaps happen to one of us. Yes. Maybe. I wouldn't say that it will, but it could. Are you saying that we're going to die? I'm not saying for sure we're going to die, but the possibility is there. Can you understand? If you may, if you're worried about dying the next day, then what should we be doing the day before? We should be doing should. Then you understand, even if one of us die, we will die as a time. Go. Go be in the spotlight. I shall be in the They didn't have guns in those days, but they had bows and arrows. 
and they were shooting at him, and they finally tracked him down. They were closing in on him. The arrows were coming in from all over the place. He turned, there was another arrow. But he had a shield. They kept on trying as best as he could to try to block up the arrow. But one arrow got through, and it hit Shaw. Shaw was hit. He was injured. He knew he wasn't going to last much longer. And he's thinking, what am I going to do? I'm just going to wait for them to come and get me and take the Melech Yisrael and, and just torture me and then kill me? Shaul Shmuel told me I was going to die. And he turned to his nice Caleb and said, Take your sword and kill me. Stick it through me and kill me before those guardians get hold of me. Please kill me. He said, I can't kill you. You're the Melech of Klai Yisrael. I can't kill you. But don't you understand? They're going to come torture me. But I can't. So if you're not going to kill me, then Shaul said he's going to kill himself. And he took his sword he stuck it into the ground, and as the point of the sword was sticking up, Shaul fell on top of the sword. And when his nice Caleb, the weapon carrier, saw what happened, he did the same thing. And the first melech of Klai Yisro was just Nifta. Boys, let's just hope that it the Shem, the next melech of Klai Yisro, the melech HaMashiach, will come to come. <laughs> Gentlemen, how have you enjoyed tonight's performance? Everyone, please be seated. Please be seated to introduce to you the stars of the evening. Connie Schnell as the King's Servant. Connie, please. Hey! Sri Ray M. Amen. Sri Jukurai. Yeah! Sri Sister as our Martha. And Chana Mechter of Shmua, Hanani. Karen Epstein as the Nani. And for the witch of the evening, our one of our star performers, Shia Jokha. And for our main star of the evening, before we introduce the next star, I'd like to thank the producer and director of the show, Eliezer Shaya. and everyone else involved in the play and all the essays and all the script members involved. Our star of the evening, who needs no introduction for the greatest performance that shows It is true that money can corrupt, but that's not our goal. Rather, we like to redefine the common interpretation of rich and poor. Let me tell you a story. A wealthy man was once traveling through Europe on a business trip. Along his journey, he passed through a small town of Rada. He decided, being in the town anyway, he would stop and visit the Bubba Hadar, Kok Tain. After all, although he had a house to shelter his family, he'll be much more easily satisfied and will find that more of his desires will be fulfilled.
This whole day, all was quiet in the streets of Kuwait. Tonight, however, just a few hours ago, there have been reports, we have been receiving reports, that the United States Army has been calling, called a surprise attack on Kuwait and has put 20,000 sorties, called 20,000 sorties into Kuwait. They have been hitting many, uh, many places in Kuwait. We have not had confirmed reports exactly what things they have been hitting, but we have to assume that they have not been hitting civilians. They have just been hitting targets uh, of the army of Kuwait. On the, side, on the other side of the coin in Israel, the situation is very tense. People have been saying for these last couple of days that Saddam Hussein would pull out, pull out all the stops and would not hesitate to bomb Israel. As you recall, a few days ago, in a meeting between Secretary of State James Baker and Tariq Aziz, one reporter had asked Tariq Aziz if Israel would be bombed. And his answer, and I quote, yes, definitely yes, unquote. And this has scared the Israelis very much so. They have been given out gas masks, People in the, in the, all the civilians have been given gas masks, they have been given sealed rooms, they have been told where to go in case a bomb or a scud will attack. The, also, the airports, the airports and the Russian immigrants have been coming in. As they come in, they've been given gas masks. As tourists come in, they have been given gas masks. There have been gas masks all over the place. All stores have run out of gas masks. There's been a run of gas masks. And all stores are empty with gas masks. There have been children and even little babies who have been given gas masks and the situation originally has been very tense. However, just a few hours ago, I have received a report that the situation has calmed down considerably. People have been sighted in the streets. There have been people open to business. There have been business as usual, people in the streets. Tourists have been sighted in the usual tourist attractions. We don't know why there has been calmness, why calmness has come. But we have to assume that because no attack has been made on Israel yet, people have said that Saddam Hussein was just pull, pulling them apart. And we will, this is all the information we have right now. We will update the situation as we get the information. We now return you to your regular program. And it's on. Both guys are nervous, guys are calm. Simple, it's obvious. But I'm just saying there's nothing. He promised for four months already, one thing about America, that's it. Killing us all out. Every part of the world is going to have blown up. What happened? And I, we see it by ourselves. America bombed the heck out of them. What did they do? Nothing. We're sitting here listening to the radio, wasting our time, doing nothing. We should be out, enjoying the people, opening our business again. Simple as it can come. Now I'm saying I don't agree. Kids, y'all, he doesn't understand. We're going through a 
as we get more information. But we have a report that a Rechav Alibi has been hit and there have been civilians hit. As we said before, the report cannot be confirmed yet and we will update the situation as it warrants. We now return you to your uh, regular programming, but if the situation will warrant, we will interrupt the program.
Thanks for buying me over, Isaac. Excuse me. Not loud enough. Yo, yeah, look. Oh. Thanks for buying me over, Isaac. You're welcome. So, Ellie, how are you doing? Well, I'm just having fine. Would you like anything to drink or eat, maybe? No, thank you. I'm fine. No, it's house feeling magnificent. Thank you very much. You know, my parents put a lot of money into the house. And the furniture is fairly new, and the house is fairly new. Yeah, everything looks new, except I don't understand. You have such a big living room. And smacking over the living room, you have this old mirror. Why do you have the mirror for? Tell you, Ellie, it's a long story. I'm sure you don't want to know. No, I do. I'm very curious. Tell you, Ellie, you don't want to know. It's a long story. My father tells it every other year, and it's very boring. I'm telling you, you don't want to know. I do want to know. Alright. Well, this mirror has been in my family for many generations. And this mirror was belonged to my grandfather, and it came down to our family. It's a very long story. This is how it goes. Bills! 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 Look at all these bills! How am I going to ever pay these bills? Man, I only make enough just to be able to support my family barely by the skin of our teeth. I don't know. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Come in.
James, James, thank you very much for this water. Thank you. I have a big problem I have to tell you about. I don't know what these people want from me. Everybody's coming along. They all want donations, handouts. I don't know what to do. I work for my money. I work very hard for my money. And these people, they expect money, money goes on trees. They want hundreds, thousands of dollars. I don't know what they think I am. I don't know. I, it, these people, have to, I have to start a new policy. That's it. Jane, you have to be a favor. Anybody who comes to the door, I don't want to hear their story. I don't want them to waste my time. I don't want them to hear your story. I don't want them to waste your time. Nothing. When they come to the door, you just tell them, here's five dollars and they should leave. I don't, I don't want to see anybody. I'm busy. I have things to do. Please. That's all you should tell them. Okay? Thank you.
seriously. And the thing with McCall Dawson there was when he came into my house a few years no. ago. Carly, remember when I came last time, I was hesitant. I didn't want to give you a rough with Parnassa. Remember in the beginning? Right. And I said that things, bad things will come my way. No, bad back. things are happening. Nothing's happening. I just, I'm giving you stuff. I realize, no, I realize now that I was wrong. No, 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 no. Not for sure. Money that you had. Where, where's he going? Why, why don't you give me stuff? Nice to me, though. So, uh, let me show you something. This mirror, you see this yes, mirror? Your prized possession. Your prized possession. Look yes. inside. What do you what do you see in this mirror? Yes. I see myself, of course. See, what do you think? That's all you see. You see yourself in this mirror, right? Yes. Yeah. I see myself. Now come. Here we go. Where are you taking? To this window here. Yeah. To the window here. Where's the look outside? What do you see? What do you mean, what do I see? Yeah. I see. I see plenty of people. People, you see, you see through the window. Yeah. Yes. So the difference. See this mirror. Yes. See this. What are you doing? Silver. Yeah, silver. No, 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 no. See this. Yeah, yeah. What about the difference between a mirror, where you can only see yourself, and a window where you can see out, you can see people, you can see through it. Yeah. The difference is the silver behind it. That's the difference. That's the difference. Rebbe, this is hard to understand. I can accept it if you tell me I have to thank Hashem for that after all. We all know the statement comes to the title, but we should appreciate it and thank Hashem for that.
one can improve themselves, even with what could be called a difficult life, and how anything else could not have been.
that part. What's happening? Oh, now, now it's coming back to me. It's smoke by Moshe's room. The fire. But where am I? What's happening? Where am I? I am the Yitzchak. I am the Yitzchak. You are now being summoned to the Hezdin Shomayla. Hezdin Shomayla? The judgment. The biggest judgment of my life. I don't know what I'm going to do. It says, From a smile about Kaveri, who never has been up. If someone's out to his friend, then he'll be here first. I just got to go to the house. They had a big fire. He treated me so well. He didn't have anything to eat. He didn't have any, any place to sleep. He had a few mattresses. They're living so poorly, all the children in his house, they're all starving. Maybe I could ask Kakash Baruch, maybe I could ask from the Bedrash of Milo that they should help him out. Well, what's going to be? Let me, let, me, let me go into the din. I'm called the din. I have to go to the din. Ben Shomayro, please. Moshe and his family, they live in such poverty. And even through the poverty, they go and they help out whoever they need. Anyone that comes, anytime I have to have a place to stay, I always knew that to go to Moshe's house, I'd always be welcome there. But what's why does it have to be like this? Why does he have to be so poor? If he'd be much richer, if he'd have more money, then he'd do it much more. He'd be able to maybe have a few extra rooms for guests, and he'd always have guests there. I don't know. I can't understand this. Why is he poor? He could be rich, and he'd do much more on the and he'd do more meals for others, and he'd give more to the Are you doubting the word of the Melem, Malchi Hamlach Makadesh Baruch Hu, the Gezerah Makadesh Baruch Hu? Do you think that you are smarter? You have it all figured out? Makadesh Baruch Hu has many complex decisions. There is much going on in Shemayim. Being rich isn't always the best thing. Don't doubt. Because they were up there by the level. What do you mean? What could be worse than the way he's living? And even in his poverty, he's so happy. He's always learning. I come to his house. He's sitting by tomorrow. Anytime I talk to him, he's so nice. He's so pleasant. And he always has a good word to say. When you have problems, he always helps you out with them. What could be worse? I don't understand. I am Ben Shal. I am Ben Yitzhak. You don't seem to be convinced. Well, we're going to send you back to Earth. We're going to make him rich, and you'll see for yourself. Friends are one thing, business is another thing. 
But the time is money. Please. The motion. Well, please leave. Please come back please. next time. No, please. 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 Uh, uh, please. 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 Better show my other right. It's not always the best thing to be rich. You see, how much more to dump on, how much more time and patience he had for people when he was poor. Now he's rich, he's always busy, he's always on the phone before he had a Gemara in front of him, before he was always learning. Now I have a problem, I want to talk to him a little bit, and he throws me out of his house. I don't know what got into him. Must be the money. How are you? Um, Last thing I remember was smoke, coffee. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, it's, it's terrible. I, I just. But, but the main thing is that we're here in Shemaya Ziyar. Serve Hashem with joy. This happiness can only be attained by someone who is satisfied. We must learn that all which we have is enough for us to get by, and that money is not what's important in life. Yeah.
Don't join 